Hi there, everyone. Uh, today I am working on cute little pumpkins and I wanted to show you how I bring the bottom all together. And when I knit these, I knit them right side out and I leave a long tail, but I knit them right side out and then I turn them wrong side out to get, so I don't have to do a whole bunch of purl stitches. So I kind of cheat a little bit. Um, and this was a pattern that I did a couple years ago. And I do, whenever I cast on my stitches, um, 40 or however many, um, depending on the size. And then I end it like I end a hat. So that I only end up, I think there's like 16 stitches or twice as many. So if I have, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's 16 stitches here that I cinch up. So it has a nice clean top and it's not real bulky. Now, whenever I flip it over on the bottom, it has all the stitches. So if I cast on 40 stitches, then it has all the stitches. And I think that I want to add some more stuffing to this to pull it out more. And I think that would help uh, it not be quite so cinched at the bottom, but that's just kind of the nature of it. You have a top and a bottom and there's 40 stitches there. That's a lot to bring all together. And it does leave just a tiny bit of a hole. And then you can uh, seam that going across if you don't want anything to come out. Uh, but that's it. And I think it actually came out pretty good, but I'm gonna show you how I brought this together because I think it's a pretty clean uh, stitch. Um, not even a stitch. I'll just show you how I pulled it together. So this is my crazy sexy wool by Wool in the Gang pumpkin. And this is all I had left for a tail and you can pretty much get away with that. And what I like to do is, so I do have it with the right side or the wrong side out, but this is the right side. All right. so. When I bring this together, so looking at the top of this, I'm going to go from the inside out and I'm going to pick up each of these stitches. And you don't really need a long tail to catch them all if you do it like this. And then I kind of, I try to hold that my needle and move it a little bit at a time and just work my way all the way around and I don't stuff it yet I do this and then I stuff it but you could I think you could stuff it I guess it's really just however you want to do it whatever works best for you but this is what I did and then almost all the way around Now I can start pulling that. There we go. Because you don't want a big lump over here either. Like that. So now you can pull that through. And then I put my fingers inside. So see how I'm tightening that, that loop? That was the beginning. And see? Uh, still have a long tail and now you can go ahead and stuff it with whatever you want to stuff it with um i didn't want to go out and buy any polyfill so i am using um and this one i think i used some old washcloths and i had seen jess at make and do cruise with one of her oh her projects she used um like Walmart sacks, uh, grocery sacks, the plastic ones. So I was thinking about using, I have tons of those. So I thought about using some of that and it might crinkle, um, but maybe if I use a washcloth in there with it, I don't know, maybe it won't wrinkle or crinkle so much, make noise. But even if it does make noise, eh, who really cares? And it's a decoration and people really shouldn't be playing with it anyways. It would be maybe make um, interesting if you filled it with beans you could do like a bean bag type game with them. If you wanted to do that, that sounds kind of fun. 